Hi Floss Tube. Welcome back to my channel, NBC Stitcher. I'm Matt, this is Augie, and this is Floss Tube episode number 24. Uh, today is Sunday, April uh, 25th, uh, around there. Um, and this is uh, a channel about cross stitch, and I talk about books and um, other stuff. Uh, but mostly floss tube uh, and about cross stitch. Um, it's been a little bit of, it's been about three weeks since the last time I did a video. And um, last weekend was just really busy with quite a bit of things. Uh, and then I have been working on one project for the most part uh, and getting a substantial amount of progress on that. Um, but, um, so I've just kind of been pushing it along. Anyway, um, I have, uh, the, this video is also going to have several inserts, uh, because since the last time I did a video, I filmed a few things, um, including my unboxing of the, um, um, spring, uh, equinox. Yeah. Spring Equinox box uh, that um, Brandy did from Be Stitch Me. And so I filmed it as I was opening it, and then I'm going to insert it in here when we get to haul. Um, there's also a couple inserts from a project that I have now given as a gift, and I filmed when I finished it and talked about it. Um, and then when I FFO'd it, I did a short little thing of how I FFO'd it, and so I'll put those in as well. Um, so you will see some uh, costume changes uh, this episode, um, but it's, um, you know, just because I've filmed it on multiple days. Uh, but anyway, um, and currently there is a dove right outside this window next to me that is kind of teasing Augie, and he's just like growling at it. Um, so he may bark at it or may growl at it or may do something. Um, and we'll see what happens, but fair warning. Um, anyway, okay, so I've got some haul, I've got uh, some finishes, some FFOs, uh, and then some progress on several whips and then some plans. And uh, yeah, um, and then a little bit of book talk at the end. Uh, so if you're looking for that. Um, also, I want to say thank you to everybody that has uh, subscribed, commented, liked my videos. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I really like uh, anybody that sends me an, a message on Instagram uh, or anything like that. I mean, the reason why I did this, started doing this a year ago um, is because I wanted to get to know more people in the cross-stitch world, and I have. Um, so I really appreciate all of you all for doing that. Um, I often forget to say that until the end of the video, if at all, so I tried to make sure I did it here. Um, this is also, it's been a year now since I started doing floss tubes, so this is a whole thing. Um, but I'm really excited for this. Um, the next work is going to be really busy the next several months, um, and already is busy, and so uh, I don't know I'm going to try to do every other week, but there may be some times when it's more than that or less than that. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but I'll try to do that. Um, and anyway, so let's go ahead and get on going. Um, the first thing I want to do, so uh, I have a couple finishes um, or a couple FFOs. And uh, so I showed these last time. These are from Satsuma Street's uh, Primavera, which is spring. And it's, it's a nine by nine pattern of, uh, or sorry, three by three. So there's nine motifs within like a border. Um, and I've just been doing the motifs and these are the three that I had finished. Um, and so I FFO'd them onto five by five, uh, canvases. Uh, and I, there's on a 16 count Ada, uh, and with the called for DMC, there's these two birds right here. And then we've got this flower that kind of reminds me of the flower on Mario, uh, Super Mario Brothers that gives you fireballs. Uh, and then you got this flower too, this little tulip. Um, and so I 
uh, stretch those. That's kind of my go-to finishing, as you can see, uh, that I do myself. Um, I stretch it over a canvas. Now on these and more of my more recent ones, I've been putting a layer of batting between the canvas and the piece, and it kind of fluffs it up a little bit. I like the look of that. Um, it may even even out some of the back sides. I don't, especially with these, there's not a lot of carrying or there's not, I don't do that a whole lot. Um, well, with Ada, I tend to do it a little bit more because it doesn't, you can't see through it as much. But um, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, I like finishing them that way. So I've been doing that. And I get the little canvas frames at Michael's come in like a two pack. They're often buy one, get one half off or buy one, get one free. There's there are, Those canvases are often on sale. Um, and sometimes I have purchased a canvas on Amazon or at Joann's that's just like a size that Michael doesn't have for some reason or in a bigger, you kind of look around and find them. They're pretty easy. These are like, most of them are the cheap, the like least expensive canvases. Um, and then yeah, I use a, a, a staple gun and just stretch them on, staple them, and go from there. Um, I am gonna insert, first I will insert the part where I show the um, the Oklahoma piece that I made for my boyfriend. Hello, um, you may notice that this is not the shirt and exactly the space that I was in that you just saw me, um, cause I am filming in the past to put this into a future floss tube. Um, this. So I am doing this because the piece that I worked on uh, and finished um, is one that I'm going to be giving away and he sometimes watches these so I didn't want him to know that this was happening before his birthday. So um, this is for my boyfriend and he has a lot of Oklahoma themed stuff in his house. He's from Oklahoma. He lives in Arkansas now, which is right next door. Um, and he is, uh, but uh, I thought he would like something Oklahoma-y, and he's very, uh, he, well, I haven't tried to get him to cross-stitch, but he definitely enjoys me cross-stitching, uh, and stuff. So, um, this is what I made. This is Oklahoma, um, actually doesn't have a name. It's from Vlada X Stitch on Etsy. She is um, a designer there, and she has a bunch of these different um, pieces where it's the state, uh, the outline of the state, and then some kind of picture through it. Um, this is from Chickasaw Recreational Area here in Oklahoma. Um, my stepdad was saying that he's actually been there with Boy Scouts. I may have gone as a kid, but he remembers it. So um, I did change the wording here, the letter, the color, sorry, um, it's spelled correctly, uh, but I changed that to a different color instead of just black. Um, and then uh, everything else is the called for and I added my initials there at the bottom. But this is a 32 count Lugana. Um, it's from Be Stitch Me, and I don't think I have a color name. Uh, I think I just bought it in a Friday Night Fight Night, but it's a beautiful color, and I really enjoyed stitching it. Um, this, I'm gonna finish it on a frame, uh, a canvas frame. Uh, this is the eight by 10, and so it's going to, I'll give you just a little sneak peek of what it's about gonna look like so you can see that it's gonna be great um, but yeah um, his birthday is I'm filming this on the third his birthday is in two weeks uh, so by the time I put this in and the next floss tube it should have already happened um, I will this will not go into the video until I have given it to him um, and then I'll put it in. So the rest of the video, I don't look like this, uh, or at least not wearing this shirt, hopefully. Um, and uh, then you'll, you'll get to see that then. But all right, back to the red, blah, blah, back to the regular uh, portion of this video. Bye. Seeing that, I'm going to insert the part where I show about the, uh, when I FFO'd it, doing the same kind of uh, Q 
canvas, uh, it's a little bigger, but you can see that here. Hi everybody, welcome back uh, to this extra snippet into the video. Um, as I've already explained, um, I ended up pushing my filming until the next weekend, uh, but I did want to capture this before I give it away as present. Um, I have shown you this finished, but now I have FFO'd it. This is the uh, Oklahoma pattern by Vlada X Stitch that I have finished uh, and am giving away as a birthday present to my boyfriend. Um, and he's going to get this tomorrow, Sunday, April what, 18th. Yeah. Um, and so it is uh, done on a 32 count Lugana from Be Stitch Me. Um, it was an unnamed blue, uh, and then the called for colors. I did switch out the this for a. Uh, I have a there's a blue silk that I won from a giveaway from Be Stitch Me that I used for that, and then my initials. And yeah, so see you in the next part. Um, all right, so okay, uh, we've got. Uh, some a few other things. I, I don't have any other finishes, um, but I have worked on several things, uh, and then we've got some plans here too. So, first of all, I think I've worked on this, but just a little bit since the last video. So, one of my two Whip Go goals this month that were called was the the uh, Satsuma Street, and I finished all three motifs that I was going to try to do, and then the. Uh, I even FFO'd them. Uh, and then the other goal was Winter Deer was the project, and the original goal is to get halfway done. I've done some, but I haven't I haven't really worked on this a whole lot this month. Um, I've just been really interested in some other, another project. Um, and so this has not gotten the uh, attention that um, it deserves. It's also kind of like it being so much springtime I didn't it's not really feeling the winter right now so um, I will probably work on this some more my goals are for the year so as long as I finish it by the end of the year um, I'll be good I'm also okay with not finishing all of my goals they're just these are some of the things that I want to work on this year and I want to get done or get progress on um, and then things change uh, you know time commitments and all that I, okay um so uh anyway um so that's that one uh okay and then i've just done a little bit more on this but this is my uh ink circles forest of sumatra which sorry for the glare you'll get to see i've got a good chunk of it done um and this is on oh i didn't talk about the um Winter Deer is on an 18 count Ada from Be Stitch Me. Uh, it wasn't named, but it's a gray Ada and then with the called for DMC. Um, uh, and this is uh, Force of Sumatra on 36 count linen in toast from Be Stitch Me. And then the, the floss is the called for Sumatra silk from Gloriana, uh, which is a beautiful blue green. Um, goes back and forth. There's more blue, like the, the blue green than the green green part, if that makes sense. But I love this color. I love this project. Um, I've been doing, that was part of my whip goal was to get three pages done uh, or what I, I kind of adjusted it because I didn't want to start an end of or uh, not finish a motif or end it on the page. So it's a little bit, doesn't quite line up with the page lines, but I did get that goal accomplished and I've just been doing a little bit more each time, like a length a week. Um, I don't know that I did it three lengths since the last time, but I know I have worked on it at least once uh, since the last time I did my video. Um, okay, so I am participating in the Dark Queen of the Sea Sal. I don't have the cover photo. Um, uh, and then we are now in, oh, I don't know what part. Seven? Eight? 
I'm not sure. Um, but it started in September. That was the first part. So, uh, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Eight. Yeah, I think. Um, so it's, it's a full year long stitch along from Autumn Lane Stitchery. And, um, we are doing, uh, so a part comes out every month and, um, it kind of varies how much is in each part, uh, kind of what they're wanting to go through. Um, anyway, this month a part came out that finished off the coral at the bottom and then the side, and then there's a big trident. Um, I have done a little bit on the coral right here. That's about it. Um, I have not finished, I also haven't finished the part from before. Uh, I did the coral and the, the crown, uh, but I did not do the corners. I didn't finish the corners and I have figured out what I want to do with those. Um, I just haven't gone back up and done it. Um, but uh, I'm also going to be changing up the trident as well. Uh, I changed the color of the crown and so I'm going to be changing part of the trident to kind of look like she's corrupting it or changing the color of the gold trident to be like the color in the crown um, and just kind of giving it a different look. So I like the, I'm excited for that, but because that requires like changing colors and figuring that stuff out, it takes a little bit more mental energy than just following the chart. And so I haven't done it yet. Um, I've also been working on another project that you'll see in a little bit. Um, but this is on the 32 count Joblin of the called for, uh, Bewitched, which is from Under the Sea Fabrics, uh, which is, she's, uh, part of a co-sponsor of the Stitch Along. Um, you know, it's Cassandra and Aaron and then Leslie, uh, kind of all together for the Stitch Along. Uh, and they, um, yeah, it's go coming along pretty great. Um, I will get, I think I'm going to also do a little bit, not all the coral that's on the other side of the trident because there's some of it that kind of just like stops on a straight line and I kind of want to give it a little bit I don't know that I want that like hard line on that side so I'm going to try to figure out how I want to do that but I really love this pattern I have for the most part caught kept up with it um throughout the whole thing. It's really gorgeous. Um, I imagine that the next thing we will be working on is part of her, her tentacles at the bottom here. Um, cause I think she's going to be like Ursula. I don't know that, but just the shadow of what's left in the pattern, it looks like that's going to be what it is. Um, I've got on here, I've got a needle minder from Paper Crane Stitches. Uh, this little, uh, brass, uh, octopus. And so, yeah, and then I have one of mine too. Uh, but yeah, I um, I really like it and I will probably, I don't know that I'll get back to it this month because I've got some other things, but I definitely will be working on this again soon and um, look forward to that. Although May is right around the corner and Mania is going to be still don't know what I want to do. So I've got a few projects that I'm going to start, but I don't know a whole lot. I haven't really thought that far ahead. Um, oh, I do have a new start. Uh, new start. Um, I did one other, I did start, um, this is from, uh, Stitches by Dre on Etsy. And this is one of her Prudence by, or Prudence Kitsch patterns. And this is the Stop Asian Hate, uh, pattern and uh, I have a I finished Prudence uh, and the text at the bottom and then there is text in Korean above her and then a border and then with this black work on the outside uh, flowers so I am kind of making a few adjustments to the spacing and the border um, but I really do like this pattern I'm kind of at the point where it's just the black left and so I've stopped where I was, but I plan to keep on working on it and, um, just bang this out. Um, so I'm really, I really like this. This is on a 32 count Joblin. Oh, this is one of the ones from the Be Stitch Me box. Um, I talk about probably starting this on that fabric. So when I point to it, that's, this is that one, but I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, so it's one of the spring equinox colors from the box and yeah 
We just got all kinds of birds out there right now, don't we, buddy? Um, so yeah, and then this is a little peacock uh, needle, needle minder. Yep, you heard me, Noah. Uh, and this is from uh, uh, Stitch and Button, Vicky Stitch and Button. I uh, got this from her group. Uh, she's on Facebook. Um, and you, once you're in her group, she's got albums set up and you, me, please. And then she sends you an invoice and that's how it goes. She's got all sorts of stuff. Froggers, um, uh, floss, uh, cards, floss rings, lots of things. She's, she's got all sorts of stuff. Lots of needle minders. So, um, give her a check out and yeah, so this is that one. And then the piece that I have been working on the most, the most. Okay. Blueberry by uh, Singy Stitch, Rachel Moore on Etsy. And I'm not gonna show you the pattern because I pretty much have her done. Um, I still have some back stitching and the black work of the background to work on. Um, and then some beading, but all of the cross stitching is done on her and she is gorgeous. I love her as you can last week, last time I filmed, I was like somewhere around here. I didn't have much of anything up here done. Um, and I've just done all of that. These little like pink belt streamers, that's a lot. Like that was a, like a day and an evening and during the week, but it was still, it was like, oh, I just have that left. Oh, that's taking longer. So it's just one of those things where it's like, kind of looks like, oh, that's not much. Oh no, that is quite a bit of stitching. Um, but yeah, I love her. This is where she is. Um, and this is on a 32 count Joe Blinn in African Daisy by Witchelt. Um, and in the called for DMC and treasure braid. There's some metallic in the pink um, in her dress, the streamers, and down here in her shoes. Uh, but yeah, it's a, uh, you use like one strand of the treasure braid and one stand, strand of DMC, and it's really gorgeous. Um, for the most part, I've got some more of this to fill in and to work down here. And then there's some more tree on this side, uh, or bushes or, I think whatever uh, and then I've got to finish outlining her and the dress but that's pretty quick that will go pretty quick and then there's some beading here uh, to do as well and in the basket um, but yeah so and in her hair uh, but yeah I really love this piece this was one of my goals this year was to get this finished on my whip go board it has not been called yet but I'm gonna have it done before I uh, you know too much longer and I want to get her framed and put up because I just was feeling like I've got all uh, I've got quite a few big projects like in the middle of or you know somewhere and I really wanted one that I wanted to finish and wanted to get there quickly so I can get something else done and up on the wall um, I have quite a few smaller things put up, but, um, you know, the bigger things that take longer, I haven't really done that. And I do want to get her framed because she's really nice. Um, but yeah, so that is Blueberry. That is most of my stitching. And now we got to talk about haul. So, um, Augie, you're going to have to get down. I know. Okay, come on. Oh, there you go. Okay, um, well, before we actually get to haul, so let's talk about plans. So I, my plans are to finish Blueberry to get her um, completely done. Um, I think that will happen in the next week, but tomorrow, Monday, I will be working on something else. I am working on my Autumn Town by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I'm doing this with... Um, Kristen and Aaron from the Steel City Stitchers uh, on gorgeous Jody fabric. Um, and then Catherine from Paper Crane is also with us. Um, and so we've been stitching this. I don't have a whole lot done. Um, Kristen has a lot more done. Uh, she's got like the whole sky done and everything. Um, but we have been, we were working on this is like, we started it the day after Christmas and um, just done some of it and then 
we kind of were like, we need to work on this. Let's pick a day. And we picked Monday. So um, we're going to work on it some more. Hey, good boy. Um, so yeah, and this is a, it's a lot, it's a light green, kind of like a Granny Smith apple kind of look to the fabric. And it's a 32 count Lugana. Um, and then I have this Golden Girls needle minder that I put on it because I just felt like it. Um, and that's also from Vicky Stitch and Button uh, that says stay golden. So, um, you know. Uh, and then it's with the called for colors. Uh, there's mostly DMC. There's a few Weeks Dye Works and then uh, two Gloriana Silks that I went ahead and purchased. Um, this is one of the, the Glorianas. So you can see it's a gorgeous... Uh, I think it's Black Cherry is the name of that one, um, but it's really pretty. So I've got that. Uh, I'm going to finish Blueberry. And then the next piece of plans goes with Haul. So let's go ahead and get into that. Um, so one thing that I purchased recently. Oh, I didn't. Hmm, hold on. Um, there was a recent... Uh, um, Long Dog Samplers released a newer pattern. It's been a couple weeks, but it's since the last time I did my, uh, um, oh, nope. Uh, since the last time I did my floss tube. So let's see. Uh, da -da -da. uh, and um, no, uh, sorry, um, I didn't print out. It's, it's, uh, oh, um, okay. Well, anyway, I, um, will continue to look at that, but I'm going to talk to you about something else and try to do two things at once. We'll see how successful that is. Uh, but anyway, so I purchased that new pattern from Long Dog, um, and, uh, then I was trying to figure out what I wanted to stitch it with, and... Uh, Mrs. Sadis recent, well, relatively recently, uh, released a new color that she called Midnight uh, in her silks, uh, and it's uh, similar to Oxide, but it's it's got some of the colors, and it's a nice like complement to the two of them. She also put up on her, um, she was selling. You could get two skeins, one of each of Oxide and Midnight, for cheaper than a single skein, or well. If you bought them individually if you buy them together um, I already had a skein of oxide but I really liked it um, I've only used it on one small project but I know it's something that I want to use and so I went ahead and bought both of the uh, a two-pack um, and so this is midnight um, you can see it has a gorgeous uh, variation from this blue to this gold I really love it, um, and I'm going to use this on the new long dog. Um, and so I found it. It's called Opening Gambit, uh, and this is what it looks like. There we go. You can see. So it's really a pretty um, piece, and it's 176 by 269, which so... For what I stitch on, that will fit on a fat quarter, most fat quarters that I have. Um, and, you know, sizing may vary, so you got to check that. But it should fit on that. Um, and so I wanted something that I could, wouldn't have to buy, like, an extra big piece of fabric. Or I, I like that because I didn't have to do that. And this will certainly be more than enough for that. And so then I looked through my fabric, and I found what I wanted to do it on. And I have this gorgeous piece of Valkyrie, uh, 32 count Joblin from Be Stitch Me that I got on Friday Night Fight Night a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. 
um, this gorgeous teal uh, color, and then this. Yeah, I think that's going to look great. So I am excited for that. I don't know when I'll start it, but I have it like the plans together. Um, and then, like I said, I also purchased a second hank of um, oxide, which is this one. It's a little bit, it's, I guess, it's very similar in color, but it's a little bit more variegated. Um, the color, it's not as much on one side and the other, but yeah, I really like this too. And this has kind of a little bit more of a green to it in points, so yeah. Um, but that's gorgeous. Uh, okay, and I have, um, oh, I changed over my fabric storage from the packet, from the, like, they were scrap paper box holder, uh, you know, containers uh, to wrapped around comic book cards. Um, I saw Erin uh, from Steel City Stitchers do it and, and she did a little video about how to do it and she pins it on there and I got some plastic alligator clips for mine um, but I really like that and I can keep it in like it's what I have are they're plastic tubs but they fit hanging files so I have some hanging files that I can use as kind of a divider between these and I can get an I can get a nice picture of what, you know, all the fabrics, and then I can pull it out and I can look at it. So this is a new piece of 36 count linen toast. I bought a fat half of it because I love this color and I wanted some more. It's what I'm using my, um, and this is linen, uh, on my, um, Force of Sumatra, and so I wanted some. Th I wanted some more because I I really like this color, and I bought it a couple, like a month ago, and it came in recently. So, uh, it's gorgeous. I've been stitching since I worked on that linen. Um, I really, I don't. I st linen still is not my favorite thing to stitch on but I do like it. I still like an even weave a little bit better, but it's it's easier to stitch on and um, you can just get colors differently on linen than they look on even weave. And so it's really more now about, for me, it's more about what the color is that I want to stitch on versus like the type of fabric. Cause I will stitch on Ada, I will stitch on even weave, I'll stitch on linen and kind of just whatever is the right color for that project that I want to work on. Um, and then I did get Friday, my fabric of the month for April came in from Be Stitch Me. Um, and so I get 32 count Jobelin on that. And this is Anemone, which is a nice purple. And yeah. Um, I went ahead and wrapped these on the cards because you get a pretty good idea of what it looks like. And this is the other one. I get both. She offers a neutral and a color uh, club, and or you could get both. Or she will alternate between them if you want her to. Uh, and this is from the neutral, I think. Yeah, uh, it says neutral. This is Bronze Age. And like I said, 32 count Joblin. Um, now... It's not that every color is new. Um, I don't think, I know I don't have either of those, but I know in, I know I've received a color that I've already had, but they're all gorgeous, so I'm not complaining about it, but it's not like every fabric of the month is a new one. You might, she might do a new one in the colorful or the neutral or both or neither, um, but, I don't think I've ever gotten neither, uh, but yeah, it's it's really great. Um, and then this is my fabric of the month from Fortnite Fabrics, and this is uh, a 32 count uh, Lugana, not a Joblin. And this is um, I'm in the co the colorful duos, um, and this is Thelma and Louise, which is a nice. It's very light. It's like a pink and purple, very subtle color. So really pretty. 
Um, okay, and then my last fabric of the month, I don't know why, I, well, because um, Jody from Steel City Stitchers is now doing a fabric of the month as well, and so I had to join, um, and she's doing, she will send you, um, she doesn't send everybody the same colors, she just dyes what she wants and then sends you some of it. You get two different colors, they're fat eights, um, and it's whatever, you, you can specify what kind of, what you want to stitch on, but it's all great. Um, and I got 32 count uh, Lugana, uh, and this is this beautiful purple and blue, like a periwinkle kind of color, and then this gorgeous orange as well. And so I, yeah, I've really been, she just started, um, she was trying to, like April was her, it didn't, it's not, it wasn't actually starting until May, but she went ahead and was ready to go for April. So the people she had in, she got through it and she thinks, uh, I think she was going to open up some more, but, or she may have a wait list, but you can find out more information about her from Steel City St Stitchers uh, on their uh, floss tube. Um, and yeah, it's really great. Um, I've really enjoyed, I have several pieces that I've stitched on from her and it's really, it's beautiful. So, um, oh, and when I got my Hank, my two Hanks from Mrs. Sadis, this is her card. She also sent me a nice little needle minder, this little blue star. So another needle minder. Um, okie dokie. So I have, uh, one other, this was one of the ones that I pre-ordered from the Expo, uh, from Needlework Expo, and it came in. Uh, there was some mix-up, and so uh, Fire Poppies was waiting on this to come in, and then it came like the week after I did my last video. So this is from Rosewood Manor, uh, and this is uh, Griffins of the Kingdom. Yeah, so it's a really pretty... Uh, sampler type thing with different griffins um it's in three colors black and then um a is it there's a red uh rbg dmc uh there's a red and a gold um and i think they're metallic rainbow gallery treasure braid yeah so she did it, it's stitched in um, treasure braid and black. So it's really pretty. And then there's some different, um, you get some extra designs in the booklet as well. So it's a beautiful, uh, if you like Griffins, which I do, um, there's some really cool things in here. And uh, yeah, I really in, uh, look forward to doing that. It's no plans, no current plans to, to work on that. Um, and I ordered again from Fire Poppy some additional stuff as well. Um, and I, this is for one of the things I am going to start in May. Uh, I needed a couple extra, well, I need an extra skein and I wanted to make sure I had three from the same, uh, dye lot, uh, in case. And so this is, uh, three skeins of cayenne from uh, Classic Color Works, and it's a uh, cotton floss, a nice red orange color. And then I bought some treasure braid for Cleopatra from uh, Bella Filipina. I've been kidding that up. I don't have the chart yet, uh, but I bought. Um, that's kind of weird. Okay. Um, the gold and copper, I'm converting it from the Krynik to this, uh, because I don't want to wait for the Krynik, and I know that there's some big, there's some delays, and Krynik's not making certain colors right now, so, or, I don't know the full details, but I've heard that, and so, it's, uh, trying to find alternatives to that. Um, and then I bought a few more patterns because, you know, that's what we got to do. Um, first up, we've got the Jackalopian Tapestry from Lindy Stitches, and I bought this from Fire Poppies. Um, so you can see this. Uh, I will completely blame P 
Park Cropper Bart for this. He's been stitching on it a while and he's been stitching on it at uh, on our Friday night Zooms uh, and virtual stitchers and I really like it and I really wanted to do that. So um, I purchased that, which was one of the ones from the expo. Um, and then I bought two more of the Move for the Mer Move the Merrier patterns. Uh, I got the Tiny Modernist Strawberry Cow, which is the one that the Steel City Stitchers are all doing. I think I am gonna do this on the Jody fabric the orange is very similar to the one that Jody's doing. I may do that. I may use the periwinkle color. I'm not sure. I may have to change some of the floss, but uh, I'm going to do that. And then I also bought Thistle, the Helian Koo, which is from Bendy Stitchy. And it's this gorgeous, like, Scottish Highland cow in a dress with plaid. It's really cool. Um, and... So with the Moo the Merrier, there is uh, part of the idea behind it was they, there's a, a thread pack from Sulky Threads, which I do have. Um, I bought it because I, was, I already purchased the Ink Circles, Hey Diddle, and Slick Fiddle, and I really um, wanted to use that. I haven't used it yet, but my friend Robert, Robert Palace of Stitches, he started uh, Think Hey Diddle. Uh, and he's using the sulky and he loves it. He thinks it's absolutely great. I also purchased something else, the O Feathers with the sulky. Um, and so I'm excited to do that. That's also part of my mania plans, but I, you, you certainly don't need a set of the thread pack for each of the patterns because most of these are pretty small. I mean, Thistle is 60 by 60, Strawberry Cow is 66 by 66 so these are you know quite manageable size wise you can do this um and then they both they gave a uh, well um tiny modernist gave a dmc and an anchor uh color uh, although there is one here that is just dmc or anchor there's not a sulky for it uh and then um bendy she gave uh, a DMC alternative to the Sulky as well. So if you don't want to do the Sulky, uh, there's that. Hi, everybody. Um, so you will notice uh, this is the Spring Equinox box from Be Stitch Me. And I am in, once again, another outfit. Um, this video is probably going to be the most uh, costume changes in any of my videos, um, at least for now. Uh, because this came today. This is uh, Monday, uh, April 5th, and I this was delivered today, and I wanted to do a um, unboxing portion of my floss tube uh, instead of just doing this as part of haul. So you'll see this, and then there probably is going to be another um, portion put in here uh, that you'll see. Um, well, yeah, uh, so... Anyway, um, you'll get three different outfits from me this time. Um, but anyway, uh, okay, so, Augie, I do not want to play right now, I'm sorry. I know I just got home, but we gotta do this video. Um, okay, so, uh, I have not opened this, I've just cut the tape to get, um, you know, to be able to open it. So you're gonna see my 100% live reaction. Um, to what came in this box. So, um, ooh. Okay, so if you haven't gotten Brandy's box before, she includes lots of different things. Ooh. Uh, and I think I got the deluxe. Or maybe the, I don't remember which version I got. Uh, I don't think it says. But anyway, um, so let's start with, okay, I got, uh, these look like some counting pins. Um, these are, uh, have some um, flowers on this side and some uh, butterflies on this side. There's, so there's four different counting pins, which is nice. Um, I don't really have any of those, so that'll be helpful. Um, we got another thread sorter. Uh, 
which is great. I just used my one for the winter one to kit up something um, where I just have a few three colors and so um, but I'm gonna have lots of skeins of them so I had um, I had used this on that other one so I'm sure I'll find another project that will be useful with that. Um, okay uh, we also got a corner gauge which is great I've been looking at these um, and I love the hole in the spot. So you can see one inch, two inch, and then three inch would be out here. Um, so you just hold this on your fabric and then you know where you need to start your stuff if you're gonna use that method. Um, ooh, we also got some thread drops. These are wooden thread drops on a nice uh, ring. Um, so you got eight. Which is the nice, I mean, you, there's plenty of patterns that would have like eight colors that you could easily use this on. Um, and they are very sturdy, um, very nice. And um, there's candy, there's lots of uh, Tootsie Rolls. Um, that's what I see so far. Uh, so that's nice. I always enjoy some nice Tootsie Rolls. Um, haven't had them in a while, but I do enjoy them, so. Uh, an 11 by 11 Q-snap, which are my like standard, which is great. I always like having another one of these um, in my pile so that I can put something else on something, uh, start a new project and put it on there without having to like take something off another one um, and to do all that. Uh, okay, this is a nice little box. I mean, I know this is not the actual item, but there's something in here. Um, oh, it's another um, fob. This is a nice spring uh, pinks and silver with some butterflies down here. Um, so that'll be nice to put on a scissor or something to help me keep track of it. Um, I don't know what this is. Oh. oh, I think this is a needle case. Nice little wooden needle case. I think um, the the cap screws on. Um, it's not lipstick, so probably useful for me. Um, definitely useful if it's a needle case. I think I'll use it as a needle case unless it's something else that I don't. I'm pretty sure this is a needle case, but yeah, nice little uh, screw top. Uh, that's awesome. Um, okay, so. Uh, Well, I guess, is that, does that go with that? Or, oh, I think I know what this is. Okay, so this is, um, it's a little metal uh, container and it's got a magnet glued to it. Um, so I think this is like a, an attachable ORT container. Um, I've seen some people, um, I think it's, oh, she's a, needle minder seller on Etsy. Um, oh, and it has this beautiful little pattern on it, um, pink and uh, painted on there, which is nice. Um, but I think it's, oh, uh, I don't remember, but I know Michelle Bindi had um, them, and I think Julie has them too, where it's like a little, um, like, I don't know if it's clay or porcelain or whatever, but it's a little bowl with like a thing in it to help catch your orts. And it has, it's like this where it has a needle minder or a magnet on it so you can attach it to your fabric and, or anything else that you're doing. Um, but speaking of needle minders, we got, it's like a couple. Um, so there's this lovely, I guess oh nice okay that works um, it's a nice little flower with a little um, pearl center and then you've got a little uh, leaf there and then some magnets so you can put it on there um, and then we've got a uh, this is a thread, a threader, 
uh, but it's been decorated and it's got magnets on it so you can keep it with your needle minder um, or you could yeah uh, so it's a cute little um, got a little uh, ladybug and some other things these um, I don't use a threader all that often but when I do I use one of these so it's great to have another one um, that I can you know keep around so that I can have like a travel one I guess um, and then we have uh, this is a oh um, this is some kind of thread wax or something uh, a nice container of that that uh, you know comes with a lid and all that uh, and then we've got another needle minder this is a little wooden flower um, you know etched on it or uh, whatever it is um, those are nice and um, okay so we're getting to the good parts I mean it's all good but you know there's lots of things um, oh there's the bill uh, or the um, so I got the epic one um, I don't remember what that is but it is uh, um, what it is but okay so we've got the silks that came in here and these are beautiful spring colors um, so we've got 10 yards oh I don't have names well there's a lovely light blue and to white variegated and then we've got a pastel yellow 10 yards um, this purple beautiful purple uh, nice pastel pink pastel green and then we've got some 25 yard skein or well 25 yard skein of morning glory which is a nice light blue um, purple very a little bit of purple in there too uh, and then a 50 yard skein of iris which is a nice color it's got kind of a mix of cream and purple I think I would describe that with a little like yellow to the cream or like you know like a, like a parchment or color really nice hey will you stop eating those you don't eat them all day and then I'm here and you're like pay attention to me sorry um, I'm almost done okay um now we've got so there is ooh these are some of the ball tip needles and these are size 26's um, I've wanted to try these and that's great. Um, so I'm excited to use these. Uh, it's really cool. I've heard somebody was saying, I think on virtual stitchers, that they're really nice, especially if you have like a dark fabric, it kind of helps find the hole. Um, so that would be nice. Uh, okay. And so Oh, this is the list of everything. Two needle minders, themed scissor fob, maple floss drops, um, threader, ballpoint needles, Q-snap, or tin, wooden uh, corner gauge, thread keep, uh, counting pins, wooden needle case, project bag by A&S Sewing Creations, and pattern full bloom. Um, so this is a pattern, I think it's by Brandy. If I'm not, I don't, it doesn't say by somebody else. So I think it is, uh, I'll just show the cover then. Yeah, I think it is by Brandy. So this is, uh, it's a nice cherry tree or, um, well, I mean, it could be a cherry tree or it could be a, a red bud. We've got red buds here. It kind of looks like a red bud to me. Um, but that's the state tree of Oklahoma, so I'm a little biased, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful. Um, that would be fun, and it's got a full border and everything, so yeah. Um, and then, let's see. Okay, so, um, and then I got a, there's a project bag, which is great. It's a beautiful project bag. Um, nice pastel uh, spring color theme all that 
uh, really goes with the um, the silks. Really great. So it's nice big. I can definitely fit an 11 by 11 in here, and um, which is kind of what I would like, what I like in a project bag. Um, and then the fabrics. Okay, so I got 32 count Joblin, um, and so there are five different fabrics, and I'm going to go through them. So the first one is Iris, which is a nice, beautiful color. Uh, purple, and just like that silk, it's got the little bit of cream to it, and then the uh, purple. Oh, I think this is maybe a little stronger on the variegation on this side, but it's beautiful. Love that. This, well, okay, I may have already shown this. I don't know. I'm, at the moment, I, this morning I saw the picture of the new, or a, I don't know when it came out, but uh, one of the Prudence um, Kitsch uh, uh, patterns by Stitches by Dre, um, that's a uh, Stop Asian Hate, and then it has that in Korean. Um, it's a beautiful, it's like a black work border around it. It looks really good. I really wanted to do it. I really want to do it, and I want to get it started. Um, I was sending that to somebody, and so I, uh, that is definitely a contender because I think it would be really pretty. Um, okay, so, and the next one is Sweet Pea, which is a nice um, purple color, light purple, beautiful. This would be great for several different Miras or Nora Corbett's. Nice fabric for that. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then, okay, Woo. that was the needle case. Okay, and then Morning Glory. So this is a nice, beautiful light blue. You know me, this is like perfect for me. Um, I have quite a bit of these, I think, uh, just in general. I don't know that I have any Morning Glory, but it's beautiful. I really do like it. Um, and then we've got Daffodil, which is a nice yellow. Um, it's not too bright. I mean, it's not like, you know, neon or anything, but it's a nice, good yellow. If you've got something that you need a yellow for. Um, the, it's a little, it's, it's, I mean, I think most of these have like a more subtle modeling to them, which is nice. Um, I mean, that goes with the, you know, spring pastel -y time. And yeah, uh, and especially on the Joe Blunt. So it may be a little different on the linen or the Ada, but, um, and then this is Paradise. So this is a nice, beautiful green, and it looks like it's got a little, well, when I hold it up, it looks like it's got a little bit of yellow to it, like in the modeling, maybe. But it's really pretty. It's really It's really great. So, yeah, that would be great. Um, yeah, so, awesome. So, that's everything. And that's a 15 minute insert. So uh, I'm not gonna take up too much longer, but yeah, I love it. Um, I did order the, I didn't get the, the St. Patrick's Day or the Valentine's one, um, but I did order the summer solstice box that, but I did the just the fabric and silk option instead of all the other goodies. Um, just because I wanted, that's the main thing of what I want in these, uh, I mean, you know me, I'm a, a fabric person, um, but yeah, no, this is really great. I loved all the stuff. Um, so yeah, I appreciate the option uh, that Brandy introduced in the last one of doing that. Um, and so, but I think, I don't think this will be the last like full box that I get. I think it may just be maybe a little more you know, I like having that option of getting just the fabric or whatever, but this is a really, I'm really happy about this. Um, this was great. I enjoyed this quite a bit. Um, and I think I just put one piece of fabric in here. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I did that, but, uh, anyway, uh, so, um, all right, well back to the regular part of the video and I'll see you there. Bye. Okay. So there's all that. I do have some more haul though that I want to talk about. 
But this is the part of the program where we talk about books. So that's all the cross stitch. Um, if and so I'm gonna get to the books now. Um, so I went to the Dixon Street Bookshop, which is in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, my boyfriend lives there. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, well, last weekend we went to no, not last weekend. Wait. No, two weeks ago, we I went to Fayetteville um, and we went to the bookstore. Um, and it's a great used bookstore. They've got, it's, you know, one of those where you kind of walk in and then there's just like lots of books and um, all sorts of stuff. So I love going to used bookstores and finding books um, that either new books to me or books that I've already read or listened to, but I want, but there's like a nice copy of them and I want to, um, either change out my paperback for a hardback or just get the hardback, um, one of those things. I like hardbacks on my bookshelf just because I like the way they look, but um, I most of the time consume them through audio form, so uh, if it's used or whatever, as long as it's still looking nice, it doesn't matter to me. But anyway, so I picked up five books, all of which I already owned uh, or have listened to and read, uh, but I, wanted to go ahead and go through my book haul. Um, so first up is Gideon the Ninth, which is a relatively recent book. Um, I read this in the last six months. It's really nice. Um, Tasman Muir, Space Necromancers, and their Cavaliers. Um, it's great. I really enjoyed this. Um, it's a really good book and yeah. Uh, oh, they gave me a bookmark. So this is Dixon Street Bookshop. You can see this is what they do. That's where they look like. Uh, yeah. Um, they're in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, now, I also picked up Scourged, which I think is the final one. Yes, okay, so this is the final book in the Iron Druid Chronicles uh, by Kevin Hearn. Um, it is follows the adventures of Atticus O'Sullivan, or Sheehan O'Sullivan, uh, who is a 2,000 plus year old druid that has uh, the secrets of the Celtic myth mythological uh, gods, druids, uh, and their secret to eternal youth or surviving that way. So he has lived on and he has bound iron to himself such that he is protected from Fae and lots of other things. But anyway, he uh, is one of the last surviving Druids uh, from, you know, from before Christianity and then uh, before the Roman Empire and all that. So it's really a great series. Um, there's... I really enjoy it for a lot of things. The main character is not the best. Um, what I mean by that is he's not the most likable in some ways and he can get kind of um, like, I can't think, not like, like, uh, oh, I can't think of the word. Um, but he can, he can kind of come across that he's talking down to the reader. Uh, and, uh, or and certainly to the other people around him. So he gets annoying to lots of people. Um, and, but there are some really great things. He has a wonderful dog that talks um, and is, you know, one of the best parts of it. Um, I really love the audio format. Uh, the guy that does the audiobooks is great. Um, he's amazing. Uh, and yeah. So, and then I really like uh, his, um, one of the other characters, Granuel, uh, in the series as well. She kind of, she's even, I, I like her more than I like Atticus sometimes, but, uh, and then other people. But I really enjoy it. Um, I've listened to the series a couple times, and then there's a new spinoff that's come out 
uh, that's related, but these characters aren't really in it that much. Um, some of the like deities are, but we'll see. Uh, the next one of those is coming out this year, so that's the Ink and Sigil series. So I'm excited to see where he goes with that. Uh, but I really enjoyed it, and I had started getting the books, um, and so I found that one, and I was able to add that one. I didn't actually have a copy of it um, either way. Um, and then, okay, the other three books are part of the Codex of Alera series by Jim Butcher. Um, this is books four, five, and six. So we have Captain's Fury, um, uh, The Printep's Fury, and then First Lord, First Lord, First Lord's Fury. Um, so all of the books, well, the book, book one is The Furies of Calderon, and then Academ's Fury, Cursor's Fury, Captain's Fury. Um, it kind of follows the main character as he's, you know, through the series. But um, this is a really interesting, I don't know that I've talked about this before. Um, if I have, sorry, uh, I'm talking about it again. But Jim Butcher, who writes the um, Dresden series, did this series. It's six books. It's been complete for quite a few years. Um, and it was kind of like as a joke, uh, or the concept came about because he was challenged to come up with a blending two odd things together. And it was Pokemon and Roman legions. And so um, the kind of the the aspect of what the story is, is the, the people in this world, the, the main, the, the, um, I can't remember if they have a country name, but the humans in this world, um, they are, it's very Roman style, uh, world. Um, and it's kind of like there was a Roman legion that was lost from earth and wound up on this other world. Uh, and this world has like lots of peoples from different places and it's like over time they've kind of built up new societies, interacted, um, and these people, the Romans, they don't call themselves Romans, but they, in this new world, have developed the ability to control um, or to access and use like elemental magic from beings that they call Furies. And um, Furies kind of link up with somebody and then that person can use that um, ability. Um, there's different kinds of Furies and abilities to use them. Some people are really good with just one. Most people can use all of the elements to some degree. Um, but like there's water, which is also involved with healing, I think. I don't think I just made this avatar crossover in my mind. I could have, but um, uh, then also uh, maybe that's just avatar. I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, there's earth and fire and wind and um, metal, uh, which is um, lots of different things, but it's different than earth. It's... Uh, yeah, the, or iron, I think they call it. Um, but anyway, it's a really interesting book uh, series, and it's kind of like, so the, the, the bad guys end up being, there's lots of different ones throughout the series, but the, there's this like almost Borg-like entity that is, uh, and like an insectoid hive thing that is really the enemy through most of the series, which is really interesting uh and an interesting aspect of it but i really enjoyed it um i thought it's a great series uh i have read it multiple times um all the way through and i really do like it um and so these books have been on my bookshelf um but i only had paperback copies of them and so i found these three in hardback and so i wanted to switch them out i don't know that the first three come in paperback or in hardback um or how that was. So if I find the others, I will probably purchase them as well. Um, we have a pretty big used bookstore here in Tulsa that I want to go to. I haven't been in years, but um, now that I've been double vaccinated, 
yeah, that had happened. Uh, and, um, you know, it's been more than two weeks since then. So we have done, uh, been able to go back out and do things. So that's nice. Um, uh, but still wearing a mask and being safe and everything. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I really enjoyed that. So if I go again, I'll probably do another book haul and that kind of thing. Um, okay. Now what I've read, I've only read a few things in the last, um, couple of weeks. Um, I reread some stuff, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I did finish The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune, which is a, I guess it's a young adult book or, um, I'm not sure where it's shelved. It's a really good book. Um, I really enjoyed it. So the story is, um, or the premise is you have a main character that is a um, social worker uh, in a care of magical children um, department uh, and he is goes to different orphanages and um, checks to make sure how they're doing and everything and then he comes across this one and it's kind of a big story of uh, evolving what, you know, what he does and what, how the kids impact him. And it's just really, it's really good. It's really hard to like describe it. Um, but it's really a great book. Um, it's not really set in like a firm, like this is the place it's kind of, they talk about the city and the coast and this town. Um, but, and the town has a name, but it's not, it's not really clear. It kind of seems like some of the verbiage is more like British, but it's not, um, the narrator also used an American accent. So I don't know. Um, but like they said things like Lori or I don't think they, it just some of the way they phrase things, it seemed like. British English versus American English. Um, and so it was different. That aspect. It's not really clear where it's set, so that's also probably part of it. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Um, there's a lot of people on BookTube or, uh, you know, Goodreads it has a really high score. There are a lot of people love that book. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it really kind of makes you think about stuff. Um, and so that's, uh, and then it's, there's some really funny parts and some, you know, there's, there's a romance sort of, it's not really a romance, but there's character, there's character that characters that get together. Um, but it's just, it's really nice. I really liked it. Um, and then I also read uh, the sixth book on the Soulbound series by Haley Turner, which is called An Echo in the Sorrow, uh, which this is, um, I talked about this last time, I believe. This is the uh, gay romance paranormal urban fantasy series that I've been reading, and this one came out um, at the beginning of the month. It's really good. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so you've got a, the main couple are, is a gay werewolf and a wizard. The wizard's actually probably the main character, but then you know, there's also stuff from Jonathan, the, the werewolf's point of view. Um, and they are, the wizard is a federal agent, uh, in the magic, um, federal, agency uh and then his uh boyfriend um partner is a uh an alpha werewolf who has been kind of taking over from the prior alphas uh set up a rival pack to the alf alphas in new york and so they have like two tiers of were creatures so there's like regular were creatures and then werewolves uh well no creatures it's different it's not just wolves but 
uh, were creatures, and then there's the God Pack were creatures, and the God Packs are like supposed to protect the normal ones and be their like. Uh, but also the God Packs are their eyes are always a different like you can always tell that that person is a god pack because of the way their eyes are and that kind of thing so they they do that um anyway the god pack in new york um and jonathan are rivals and jonathan's been kind of taking over not taking over but the the regular wear packs have been leaving the new york the old New York God Pack and joining Jonathan and then this is kind of where that is really coming to a head here in this book. Um, there's also uh, there's some additional attempts to do stuff with uh, you know, the there's also a, a, a entity uh, Ooh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, is the like the main characters father is is a bad dude and he's trying to become a god and um that's kind of going around there's different attempts and all that so um different gods get involved uh it's really pretty interesting so i really enjoyed it um it's a really good series and then the other book that i have finished recently um i'm about to finish the second book of the two books that are out in that series and so I'm going to talk both about both of those together next time instead of doing one now and then the other one. So I have like an hour left um, but I didn't want to just like go finish it and then come back. Um, so anyway um, I'm going to have to piece different things together so this is going to take a little bit anyway and um, we're just under an hour. So um, thank you all again for sticking around and those of you that go to the end. Um, I'm generally one of those people too when I'm watching stuff. So thank you. Um, or at least floss tube. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, and yeah, uh, have a good time stitching and I'll see you in a couple weeks. All right. Bye.